we've been working with zebrafish doing experiments and uh, testing different experiments out for other grades and stuff like that. There's so often the kids are not doing um, authentic science. It's just taking a, an activity or a project that's been done and redoing it. And it started with that. We wrote lessons on all kinds of things, pollution. We wrote lessons on, um, on things that don't, have a, that don't even bring in a zebrafish. The zebrafish is like 75% of its DNA is just like ours. And so we're just trying to like do experiments on it, try to see how, like what we do to the zebrafish. It'll like pretty much what happens to the zebrafish will pretty much happen to us. So we're trying to see when it's a baby, like the growth effects that happen when you like add alcohol to the water and nicotine and those kind of things. So. We're really interested in like, child, like children, especially at the younger age, like the infant stage. So this is very interesting for me because of all the different stages of the, like, the fish itself. So seeing it go from an embryo to a full-grown fish is really cool. cool. That there's this huge wealth of information that kids should be excited about. And instead of being excited, they're bored because so often what it comes down to is taking notes, giving it back on a test, very little discussion, very little um, interaction with scientists, in fact no interaction with scientists, and, and sometimes there's actually no lab activities even. And so we really want the kids to be excited about science and to enjoy it. They gave us a fifth grade experiment and we did the experiment and at the end we came up with ideas to make it better as in if there was any confusing parts what would make it easier for a student our age or a fifth grader in that case? Um, how would they understand it better? Um, what things should we probably cut out of the experiment if they're repetitive? Hands-on labs really help me out a lot and so I'd suggest if they use hands-on labs because it really like helps you understand the concept instead of getting out of the textbook. System. The model system is using different organisms to find out things about humans, like zebrafish have 75% of the same genes as humans, so we use them as a model system to find out things about humans. I learn ab about, of course, uh, the, flor the fluorescent microscope and how they inject the zebrafish with the fluorescent protein. I've learned about dechlorinating the zebrafish embryos. Something where it's more, you're really trying to figure out something, and you're, it's not the whole grumpy scientist that you see in movies, it's people that really have a true passion for their work, and they want to do it as long as they live. I've learned so much from this, um, especially that the main points that I've really learned is that a scientist is not a person in a lab coat, it's anyone who asks a question and looks for an answer. I think the best thing about this project is the collaboration between um, real professionals, real science professionals, and kids, because that never took place. When I was at school, I, I had no idea what scientists did. Um, I didn't even know women could be scientists, to tell you the truth. But now they're not only seeing scientists, but they're getting to talk to them. There's one student here that one of the school board members knows personally, and she said that she remembers him saying a couple years ago, oh, I hate doing science for project. It's so stupid that we have to do that. To now today, he was showing her and two other school members how to use a $20,000 microscope and how excited he was. And now he wants to do this as a career. I just love working with all the equipment, especially the pieces that are $40,000 that a lot of people don't get to use. It is definitely a very good program and um, I enjoy coming back and working with the zebrafish again. It's a lot of fun. Equipment that they let us use and everything, I thought that was really neat because I mean to trust students with like $40,000 computers and like all these microscopes and fl fluorescent light microscopes, I thought that was pretty neat that they actually let us like use it without like being like bared on, oh don't touch that or don't do that or any of that. 
we know there's going to be scientists in the classroom. We want them in the classroom talking to the kids. Um, we're, they're going to eventually be, it's going to be almost a mentor relationship between scientists and students. Well, I hope that someday that science will, there will be full labs in every school and students will be able to use the equipment and become scientists even if that's not what they want to do when they grow up. I'm now seeing how big this is going to be. And the kids feel it too and they're, they're so enthusiastic.